There are tight, round, spiral galaxies. There are loose, elongated spiral galaxies. There are spirals with bars and bars with spirals. There are twins. There are spirals that are mangled by collisions. There are dusty galaxies with no spiral at all. There are flat, fat spirals and flat, thin spirals. And all have millions and billions of stars and all have millions of planets and all have a potential for life to ponder the existence and the works of God the Creator. And wherever we look in the universe, we see more and more galaxies, more and more of creation, even to the ends of the universe, so far away that the light left these galaxies five and even 10 billion years ago. You could cover this portion of the sky with the tip of your little finger held at arm's length. And everything in it except two stars is a galaxy. And each of those thousands of galaxies has millions and billions of suns, and each has millions and billions of planets. And each one is part of God's creation. As you've read in your freshman experience readings, science and religion are very compatible. Pope John Paul II said, the Bible speaks to us of the origin of the universe and its makeup, not in order to provide us with a scientific treatise, but in order to state the correct relationships of man with God and the universe. The contradiction between religion and science arises only when people extrapolate one or the other beyond reasonable limits. Science cannot say that because they understand some process, it disproves God. They've only uncovered the process, not the source of that process. Similarly, religious documents, whether the Bible, the Koran, the Hopi creation story, or any other religious document, they cannot be expected to explain the creation of the universe and everything in it in scientific terms. If one thinks about it, this would not have been possible even if God had wanted to. These documents were written 1,000, 2,000, even 3,000 years ago. Back then, people had no knowledge of atoms or molecules. They didn't know about half the planets in our solar system. They didn't know what the Milky Way galaxy was, not to mention star-forming nebula or other galaxies. The words, even the concepts, didn't exist. How could people write about that which they had no inkling using words that didn't exist? And if somehow it were written, would the writer's contemporaries have saved those writings important and meaningful, or would they have dismissed them? as gibberish. But religion does have important things to say to science. Not the how questions, but rather the should questions. Just because science gives us the ability to do something, it doesn't mean that we should do it. Religion gives science the moral compass, the ethics that are needed to make decisions that are correct for all of our world. I believe that the discoveries of science are important even to the theologian, because without a true understanding of what something is, one cannot fully appreciate the wonder of its creation and its existence. 
Our creation was so much more than a poof, and there we were. The atoms had to be synthesized in stars, then spread among the heavens to eventually condense and form planets. Life didn't originate in all its current complexity, but rather gradually became more and more complex, finally culminating in humans. As a chemist, I know that it is even more incomprehensibly complex than most people realize. It's all the result of millions of different, amazingly complex and sophisticated chemical reactions. Chemical reactions that make the most knowledgeable and sophisticated chemist on Earth look like a bumbling idiot. And they all work together wonderfully. And they all work together to allow life. This knowledge raises my awe of God's creation even more. And while our creation would be awe-inspiring if it were done in an instant, the fact that we were created by an even more complicated process over eons of times makes God's creation even more beautiful. It makes God's wisdom and power even more amazing. It's the difference between taking a quick picture with a camera versus spending days or weeks of care to paint a representation of that same scene. Which shows more skill? Which shows more wisdom? Which is more awe-inspiring? This does not mean that I believe in intelligent design. Intelligent design is not science. It's dogma. Intelligent design does not foster inquisitiveness, does not encourage exploration and understanding. Intelligent design tends to squelch questions and the search for understanding because the answer is always, God made it that way. This suggests that other things were made in different ways, so we cannot understand our universe because it's based on the whim of God. Even worse, Intelligent design likes to overlook uncomfortable truths that would lead to the conclusion that the intelligent designer was a poor engineer. Think about the size of our jaw given the number of teeth. Anyone here had to have a wisdom tooth pulled? The blood supply in our eye is in front of the light sensing retina. 20% of pregnancies end up in spontaneous natural abortions. Intelligent design is not science, it's anti-science, and it goes against all that science has discovered. So, can science ever deny the existence of God? No. The so existence of God is a matter of faith, not of science. Our science and religion, should science and religion be in conflict? Definitely not. Religion, God, can help guide science into ethical, healthy directions. And science can help us all become even more appreciative, more in awe of God's wisdom and power as shown by this incredible, endless universe that he created. Thank you for your attention. We have some time for some questions, and I can travel with the mic to you if you have some questions. Got to be one question out there. <laughs> Do you believe in evolution? Do I believe in what? Evolution. Evolution? Yes, I do. You want to follow up? Just wanted to make sure, she said. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that um, there's lots of scientific evidence for it, and I think it doesn't say anything bad about God. I think that's another more wonderful thing that God has done, God has created, something that shows his wisdom, his power, so much more than just, bang, we were there. 
I mean, think of how you would try to make something, design something, create something that could change and improve. That's amazingly difficult. And the fact that God can do that is pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Okay, what do you think in regards to evolution of human behavior, genetic predispositions to behaviors and attitudes and personality traits? Um, that's pretty far out of my field. Um, I guess my understanding, which is based on other people's research, is that um, to some extent, the way we behave depends on, to some extent, on, on genetics. Um, uh, we can't fly to the moon, flapping our arms. Um, but a lot of it has to do with um, our own choices, how we were brought up, um, the environment, the culture we live in. Yeah. Someone else? Um, while I'm walking over there, I'll ask you one. <laughs> Photoshop. Yeah, those. No, those are all actual photographs. A lot of them were taken by um, the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, the others were taken by very big. Um, telescopes on Earth, except for some of the ones at the beginning of, from Earth. Um, the, other, the only other one that was not a, was an artist picture is, all of these are real, is this one. That's an artist picture of what, he, what we think our galaxy works, what our galaxy looks like. Everything else was an actual photograph and no Photoshop. <laughs> Can you give us an example of a time when an, an ethical question uh, might shape the way a science, uh, from, a, from a theology or a religious perspective might shape the way a scientist would work? Yeah, so, so um, I think there are a number that our society and science scientists are worrying about, thinking about right now. Um, stem cell research, um, that's a hard ethical question, um, especially in terms of embryonic stem cells. Um, there's a potential to, to heal a great deal of suffering from people who have sick and have diseases. On the other hand, there's a the killing of at least one embryo to get those stem cells. How do we balance that hard question? Um, nuclear energy um, gets away from all the carbon dioxide, but we make all this radioactive waste that's going to be around for tens of thousands of years. And how do we treat that in such a way that we're not poisoning people in a thousand years? Um, Hydrogen bombs, warfare, the technology that's used there, that's, that's a pretty tough question. Um, there are some others that basically everyone has decided won't happen, except for maybe one person or two people. One of those is cloning human beings. That's been something that's decided that's not ethical and that's not gonna happen. I think there was a guy in Korea that decided that he knew better, but then it turned out he was falsifying all his data. Um, but so some of those are some of the questions that, that scientists and society is dealing with.